Hi, I'm Freya, and these are going to be short little tutorial videos to show you how to do the basic belly dance moves that are going to be in my drills videos or classes. So if you haven't been in a formal belly dance class, this is your opportunity to learn how to do each of the individual moves properly, and then you can move on to the drills classes where you can take each move, add them together, and we start layering them all together to create some really neat uh, movements, and then eventually it becomes a choreography. So let's get started. All right, so we are gonna start with the most basic belly dance move, which is the hips. And we're gonna practice both the more traditional oriental or cabaret style, which is hips coming up, and the more tribal, sometimes it's called American tribal style. Uh, it's an earthier style, and in that style, the hips go down. Uh, it's virtually the same move, but we emphasize it and we count it differently. So let's start with hips on the up. So you're gonna start, most importantly, with a very pretty and also very functional belly dance posture. So you're gonna start by tucking your tailbone. So you're gonna take that tailbone, point it towards the ground, as you use these tiny little muscles at the base here of your abs, and squeeze those in. So I can make it so you can see. So you squeeze these little muscles, and it just pulls you up a little bit. So you're not Squeeze it again like you're trying to get a bikini photo or something. Just tighten up those lower abs and point your tailbone to the ground. Now that you've got all that scrunching up done, leave this nicely tucked, keep your knees softly bent, and now deep breath up, leave that chest where it is, and drop your shoulders down. So you're gently tucked, your torso is raised, you've got space in here to breathe and to move, but your shoulders are down away from your ears. So let's start with our hips going up. Now we're gonna start with a simple step where you're gonna bring your heel up off the ground and as you do that, your hip comes up. And then lower that heel, bring the other heel up. Lift your heel, hip goes up and down. So heel and down, heel and down. Right heel, down, left heel. Right, and down, left, and down. Right, and down, left, and down. Let's go a little bit faster. In five, six, seven, eight. Right, down, left, down. Right, left, right, left. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's the motion you're going to start to feel as you're going up and down. Now I want you to keep those heels on the ground. Now if your heel isn't lifting, the way you're going to get that hip to go up is going to be more of your legs and your knees. So now your knees are bent, bring that hip up by straightening the same leg. So as you straighten your leg, your hip's going to go up a little bit. And then bring it down, straighten the left, and down. So right and down, left and down. Right and down, left and down. So to do a little exaggeration theater here, if you really straighten that leg and bring that hip up and down, and straighten and up, straighten all the way and up, and straighten all the way, but you don't want to straighten that much because you don't want to lock your knees, and you want to keep it controlled. So just up, 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 and again, making sure that you stay in that beautiful posture, because as you're doing your hips, you don't want to run into this, where your booty is sticking out, and you're doing your move like this. It's not pretty, it's going to screw up your lower back, your hips, so there's many reasons not to do that. So again, you want to take that sway back and just bring it under by tightening those low abs, and then just pointing your tailbone down. And then keep your torso lifted, shoulders down. So up and up, right and left, right, left. So up and up. Now we're gonna do it a little bit faster. One, two, three. We go five, six, seven, eight. Stop. 
start to feel that movement in your hips being separated from the rest of what you've got going on in your body. So try to think of your belly button as a cutoff point. Your movement is happening from there down, from here up to be motionless. Now it's going to take you a little while to get there. There's small little bone-mill muscles that you're going to have to get woken up and working. But you're going to get there if you just keep practicing. So just up, up, up. It's a little bit faster. Two, three, four, five, and six, and seven, and eight, and one, and two, and three, and four, and up, 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 up. Now, the other fun thing, once we start to get all our different little muscles working, is we can really control the intensity of our hips. So, if we bring most of the motion into our knees and our legs, keep those knees nice and soft, it can be a real soft up and up, up and up. And it's really just the motion of your legs swinging your hips. And you can even, you'll see like a little bit of a springy motion in your knees. You just keep that really soft. You want to make it a really sharp, more you know, intense movement. That's where your glutes come in. So when you first start doing this, you're going to feel like you've got one giant glute muscle and that's all you got back there. Eventually, you'll start to be able to fine tune different areas of that glute. So again, starting from your tuck position, as you bring your right leg straight and your right hip up, you're going to squeeze that right glute, and that's going to emphasize and snap that hip up. Then the other side, straighten that leg as you bring your hip up, and snap. So squeeze, squeeze. Here we go. Squeeze, squeeze. Right glute, left glute. Right glute, left glute. Right, left, right, left. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. If it feels like one muscle, just squeeze the whole thing. But really think of your right glute, left glute, right glute, left glute, and try to find that as you're practicing. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Up, 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 up. Sharp, 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 sharp. Now soft, soft, soft. should follow you every step of the way and again tucking all of that is very important keep your knees healthy I'm going to try to 
show you this really exaggerated on the video. So whenever you're bending your knees, even if it's a little thing like this, or if you're doing a big old squat, whatever it is, you want your toes and your knees to be going in the same direction. So knees are this way, toes are this way. You don't want your knees coming in or your knees going out. That's gonna keep your knees healthy and it'll also look prettier. So if you're knock knee or whatever it is, whatever your body shape is, do whatever micro movements you need to do to just keep those knees in line with your toes. And then other thing to keep in mind as you're doing any movement, if you're really focusing on your lower half, keeping your upper half still is one part of the equation, but also it's there. So even if it's not doing anything, it should still look pretty, which is why you'll often see me put my arms up. It's just a nice pose. You can have them out. But even if they're not the star of the show, keep them pretty. You can have nice hands, bring them up. Whatever you do with them, even if they're just hanging out and going for a ride as your hips do all the work, keep them pretty. And then the last thing, because we tend to think really hard when we're learning things the first time, so you squeeze a fist because you're thinking and you squeeze your face, relax your face. And you might have to remind yourself every once in a while to relax, but as you relax, your muscles have more motion than they can go in. So, one last time, let's do our hips up and our hips down. Starting up on the right. And five, six, seven, eight. Right, left, right, left. your basic hip up and hip down motion. 